Right, back on the basics front, and this one, we're going with a lovely one. So we're going with Maggot Shallow. I mean, massively popular way when it comes to F1 fishing, but there's so much more to it than that as well. There's so many other venues you can, blah, 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 other venues that you can go to and catch so many different species. I mean, these commercials these days are absolutely rigid with lovely, big, standard quality silverfish alongside the F1s and carp, and Maggot Shallow is just a lovely, lovely, lovely way of catching them. And I reckon Andrew's very jealous that he's not doing this one. This is probably Andy's, one of Andy's favorite ways of fishing, but, it's all about keeping things simple, as I say, with this being the basics one, I'm going to go through everything needed to keep it as simple as possible to make sure you hook as many fish as possible, get lots of bites and catch lots and lots of fish. So, on to the riggy bit. And as I said, today, we've kept it. What are we going to do first? I'm going to go with that one first. It's very mixed species, what I'm going to do me fishing with, that you might not, lot might not see later. So elastic is really light, often the case when it comes to maggot shallow fishing, because you are going to catch everything. So you're often looking for elastics sort of in the, if we go in hybrid elastics, then I'm looking at sort of eight to 10 rated up to 12, 10 to 12 rating, that sort of thing, 1.4 to 1.6 sort of range, hollow elastics you're looking at, yeah, that number eight to about a number 12, nice stretchy, light elastics that let you catch everything. Really, 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 really important when it comes to maggot shallow fishing, because as I say, you don't know what you're going to hook next. So onto the floats, two styles of floats I like using for this, again, to keep my options as limited as possible. Yes, there's other things that can come involved in overshotting, jigger rigs, all that sort of thing. That is for another time. This is just nice, simple maggot shallow fishing for everything. And I've got two rigs that are pretty much cover all the different situations. Firstly is a diamond um, hollow bristle carbon stem. I'm gonna hold that still before it shouts at me. That's one of our F1 shallow patterns. Yeah, I love a bristled float for when it's a bit faffy. Yeah, when it's through the water, a bit more delicate. I want that fall on my bait to be a bit more important. That's when a lovely diamond style float with a carbon stem, carbon stem, I can't emphasize just how important having that carbon stem is. Brilliant when I want a slightly strung out shot in pattern. So you see with this one, really, really, really simple. They've actually moved a little bit, but I'll whiz them out a bit. The shot in could not be more simple. In the all F on this one, I've got a 0.2 float and literally I've got three number 10s. Yeah, and in this case, the cube type shot. When it comes to shallow fishing for me, I think, yeah, I'm gonna say 100% of the time. Yeah, I'm gonna say 100% of the time I go with a cube type shot. I mean, stops, whatever you wanna call them because I can move them, a bit more versatile, I can move them up and down the line without damaging my line. I think they sink a bit better as well, I think they sink a little bit slower than a round shot because of the, the profile of them, but that's getting a bit technical and we don't go down that. So three number 10s, really, really simple and a three inch chuck length. So all my shallow rigs for this style of fishing when it's nice, faffy through the water, always three inch. Nice, because that gives me an option of putting a shot three inches away or I can spread it out a bit more or I can bulk it on top of it but really, really, really simple, just say as you say. A 0.2 float, three number 10s. Absolutely perfect for what I want to do. Uh, three inch hook length, line diameters wise. Depends what I'm catching. Yeah, I'll go down two ways. If it's very, very much just silver fishing, I think using a, a low diameter light line as your main line benefits your rig, makes it fish a little bit nicer. So I'd more than happy, if I was just fishing for silvers on their own, I'd more than happy fish sort of an 014 That'd be about right, what's an 014? Probably about three, three and a half pound, vaguely, depending what line you're using. That'd be about right for your main line. If there's carp and F1s involved, then I want to step it up, of course, just for a bit more robustness, and I'll use sort of a 0.16 line. Yeah, a little bit stronger, but what's that? Four to five pound, just for durability, strength with the fish you're catching. And then hook length, again, suited to whatever you're going to catch. Yeah, we're going to catch some F1s and carp. Then 013's about right. If not, I'll happily use sort of 011, 012. Yeah, lovely light hook length that means I hook lots of bites. And hook, really, really, really important because what we're after at this time of year when there's lots and lots of fish feeding freely, I've got a scabby little maggot on the end of that, is a decent sized hook. Yeah, it makes a huge difference when it comes to hooking bites and shallow fishing in the summer when them fish aren't, what are we gonna say, inspecting your bait quite as much as they might do during the winter months, I can get away with a big hook. So it's amazing putting one single little lovely maggot, well not very little, but one single maggot hooked in the pointy end on a 16. Yeah, looks a little bit crude, but it's this brilliant inefficiency when it comes to hooking bites, when those fish are really, really competing, 
definitely erring on the sides of a bigger hook. So in that case, it's a 16. I wouldn't even be too shy to go to a 14 if I needed to. Yeah, I'd happily swap to that. And that makes a massive, massive, massive difference when it comes to hooking bites, whenever you're fishing maggots or casters off the bottom. So with the rig nearly covered, what I've done, so I've set up two rigs. So the other one I'll go through next. But what I've also got, which is massive when it comes to shallow fishing, is the lash length, the distance between your Dacron connector, end of your pole, whatever you want to call it, your bead and the float. Yeah, absolutely huge when it comes to shallow fishing in that how they're fishing behaving on the conditions, what length is best to have sort of thing. So in this case, I've gone with a really short option. Yeah, what you do have to do is check at the venues that you go into to make sure there isn't a, a minimal lash length allowed. You often find that at a few venues these days, but it is always worth having the minimal. Yeah, whatever rig you have, especially with this rig with me, a uh, bristle diamond shape through the watery rig, with that I tend to always have the minimal lash length. Yeah, in that case, I've just set up a nice little four inch. This again, massively helps the fish hook themselves, increases the amount of bites that you're hooking. That's what it's all about when it comes to shallow fishing, is being as efficient as possible and having as, as many elements within your rig as possible in terms of a short lash, very little resistance on your bristle and a big hook all them using the right thing at the right time ensures that you hook as many fish as you possibly can because missed bites definitely become an issue if those things are wrong and you're fishing at the wrong depth but we'll talk about that in a minute so second rig and this is one it tends to be the rig that i'll use for all my f1 fishing i always want to use a dibber these days for nearly everything especially in the summer when it's really good it's also what i want to use when it's really really shallow as soon as i go less than sort of 12, 14 inches, even for silvers, I'm more than happy to use a dibber float these days, as long as it's shotted really, really low to create as little resistance as possible. Yeah, the thing with dibbers is they're a lot more buoyant than a bristled version of float, but they're also so much more subtle, shorter, tangle-free, they're just so much more better. So much more better, nearly a word, wasn't it? It's like Andy was talking then. For, for fishing really, really shallow, dibber's always gonna be my choice. And this is just one of our new matrix, Point one, really, really light dibbers, don't take much shot at all. All I've got on there again is two number 13 cube type shot. Yeah, but in this case, it's a bulk. So because I'm fishing so shallow, once I get to, I'm going to say 14 inch. Yeah, once we get to 14 inches shallower, they're not really watching the fall of that bait. Yeah, it's going in so quick and you're actually just trying to find out where the fish are on the day, trying to find the exact location, the right depth that most of the fish want to be at. And by racing it down there nice and quickly with a bulk, still having a little fluttery bit at the bottom with that three or three and a half inch sort of hook length, if you include the loop um, that's on the main line, it just makes a far more positive rig for catching really, really fast. So by having both set up, either a nice light through the watery diamond shaped rig, let's wait for this car to go past. If having that to find where the fish are a little bit deeper, read the bite so much better with me uh, bristle style float, or when I'm catching loads and loads of fish, I can see them swirling, I can see them really, really high in the water, which often happens later in the session, then I'm gonna to swap to me lovely little dipper that I can fish that, I mean, as much as six, eight, really, really, really shallow, and happily catch them big fish that you'd be amazed when it comes to shallow fishing. That'd be one of my key tips, is that the shallow you can catch them, so often the bigger the fish. I mean, don't be shy and coming right up in the water, you find those, the little fish often hang a little bit lower, so by swapping to this style of rig, so again, them lovely little dibbers, you can catch a lot of big, big quality fish. So with this one, I've set up a bit of a different um, lash on it sort of thing. This has got me long lash and I've actually done it a bit wrong. I'm missing a vital, a vital item on this one, so to speak. So I'm not going to go into elastic snack, it's all the same. Yeah, main line on this one though with my dibber, I tend to find it's always sort of 016, 017 because I don't need the niceness of my rig falling and it's not a bristle so it's not messing about with it enough so with a dibber you can tend to use slightly heavier line just because it's instantly fishing anyway but what it does need is whatever depth I'm choosing to fish so today I'm going to go there yeah I'm hoping to fish that at about 10 inches so what I'm going to do is put two really really big back shot number eight in this case might only put one if I keep pinging them all over the place I'm going to put a couple of back shots right above it and the back shot again a massive massive tip when it comes to shallow fishing in ensuring a hook more bites because what i might have to do on the the bright sunny still really warm days 
the fish don't like your pole being right above them. So having the really little short four inch lash or whatever your allowed lash can be very spooky to the fish. They don't want that pole right above them because the fish is so shallow, which obviously we might be doing with the dibber rig. So with a dibber, often I find it's best to have a much longer length of line. So probably up to two foot in some situations, but in this case, I've got what? Yeah, I've got a foot and a half. Yeah, I've got, probably got a foot and a half there, which in turn lets me hold my pole away from my float a lot higher off the water than it would be if I was holding a four inch lash. I'm just gonna slide them back shot down a tiny, no, I'll just pull the float up. And by having those back shot there, say a massive, massive tip, suck me elastic in. What I can do now is hold that back shot. It's quite a tricky thing to do, but I'll drop my rig in and I'll hold them back shot to stop them from sinking the float. So if I release them and let them go, they'll actually sink my float under the water. The last thing I want. But by holding them lovely and tight there, so I'm just supporting the weight of them just under the water, ideally, what it creates is a lovely tight line in between the end of my pole and, me, uh, and the back shot that I've placed on. So in turn, as soon as you get a bite, your line's really tight, really quick, so the fish actually hook themselves. Huge, huge, huge tip when it comes to shallow fishing is getting fish to do that, especially when Ide and F1s are involved. Very, very, very tricky species that if you have this slack line, if those back shot don't exist, then this line here is all slack. Really, really difficult to hook them bites because the fish suck and eject your bait so quickly it just means that you're simply not capable of striking in time to hook every single bite. So by putting those couple of back shots on, so they don't overshot my float as long as I support them, and they do a lovely job, as I say, keeping that line tight, making sure that as soon as the fish has a go, it hooks itself. Huge, huge tip when it comes to shallow fishing. So that's basically it. I mean, by having those two rigs, a nice little dibber for when you're fishing really shallow and a bristle float when you're fishing a bit deeper with the cube type shotting on, it makes your rigs massively versatile. You can dick about and it's really, really easy to keep in touch with them fish when you're fishing shallow with maggots. Right, you lads, very, very sorry to interrupt your video watching. How dare you? Quickly, if you haven't already noticed, we have managed to write a book, haven't we? Yes, we have, Which Jamie. Which is full of all our very bestest methods and features or whatever else we do on this wonderful subject of fishing. So if you haven't had a look already, go and have a look at winningways.shop and buy one for yourself.